So let me go very quickly through these slides and sort of the, again, sort of illustrating the challenges and what are some possible solutions. So, and then we'll get to why we propose these solutions and why we think about it this way is really part of the information analysis and data analysis that we're constantly doing. So volume and exit price trustworthy. There are jurisdictions with very little or no oversight consumer protection. So an exchange might be in one of those jurisdictions. There can be a lot of round tripping, fictitious trades. So you have to think about that and look for that. What is a possible solution? Well, assess all 350 markets and exchanges changes for a series of really important qualitative things like quality of oversight, amount of oversight, is the microstructure of that particular exchange efficient? Is there data transparency, data integrity? Dan and his team are looking at that constantly across all those markets. Why not pick a market with the highest volume and just stop? So we pick a thing in a year and we don't think about it anymore. Well, there's a really some interesting challenges in here, including how much new exchanges, new crypto products, new market entrants affect the volume. It's just happening over the year. So that point in time market that you chose at the beginning, is it is the volume, the level of activity there actually one that you should anchor on only at that initial point in time and stop thinking about it? A solution is to keep dynamically assessing where the volume is, where the qual where's credible volume and activity by specific asset pairs and markets at the time of at, at a particular time of day. And this is something again we'll talk about later. Why not just use the market in which you normally transact in? So this is a really nice shortcut. We only trade our crypto on this particular market. Let's just stop there. Well, guess what? In ASC 820, in IFRS 13, it says, okay, normally it's the market you trade in unless contrary evidence exists. And the notion of contrary evidence isn't precisely defined, but one of the questions we run into is, well, what's contrary evidence? Well, one of the things that is an answer to that is if a high quality market or exchange has more volume, more recency of trades, better pricing, so to speak, then we have contrary evidence is, is one of the answers to that question. So something, again, looking at the data all year long, every day, all day long, Dan and his team, we can then tell you if contrary evidence exists for your reporting entity. What if you don't have access at a particular time? Was well, access defined in GAP? What was the board's intent? Being this sort of kind of accounting policies researcher from way, way back, I go back into the basis for conclusions. I go back into the original exposure drafts from when fair value was first discussed by the board. And I see things in there that say things like we're looking for reasonable access. We're looking for the intent was to try to avoid um, entities being very, very, just using discretion to just pick a principal market that suited a particular price at that time. And so one of the things you can think about is a solution to the question of access is to look across the board, across, especially with crypto, look across the board at high quality markets. Remember, it's really an important sort of piece of the story that pass rigorous tests about the reliability and sufficiency of data and go there. Because what if the mar a market that you only have access to one market technically for, for whatever reasons, and it is a market or exchange where there are lots of fictitious trades, let's say lots of round tripping, lots of things that are, would be very concerning from a reliability and sufficiency of information point of view. You have to think about access a little bit more in, you know, in my view, this is just my view, thoughtfully than just where can I literally do this trade? And we can, there's a lot of common sense sort of things that we, we end up applying as we're talking about all of these things. So there is a, a question about that you should answer. I think this is the polling question is probably make sure you get your CP credits. So make sure you do that. So oh, you'd like to. And I just lost my ability to forward somehow. All right, let's try that. No, 
Um, something so what time of day should be used? Remember the markets are 24 seven. So it's always midnight somewhere, you know, we hear. So what you can see as a potential solution is to apply consistent, well-documented policies within the entity. And we see that a lot and we can adapt to that. So you've got example closing times, our example times are closing time of the local equity markets, or for each or for your subsidiary or your entity or division. Some people pick you know, 00 UTC. So we see some variety there, but consistent policies internally decided beforehand helps folks from helps auditors, especially not to, to sort of realize you're not trying to be opportunistic in your fair value pricing. So 